Please remain standing for our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us be in the spirit of prayer. Almighty God, creator of all, the giver of life, today we honor our veterans, those worthy men and women who gave their best when they were called upon to serve and protect their country. We remember with gratitude those who gave the ultimate sacrifice, and our hearts go out to their families. We're grateful for those who came home and are now in our midst. We bless them for the hardships they faced, for the sacrifices they made, and for their many contributions to our nation's victories over tyranny and oppression. Tonight we think also of those who serve us even yet. We pray that you will bless our soldiers and sailors, airmen and coast guard and marines, who stand sentinel at home and around the world, for their unselfish service and the continual struggle to preserve our freedoms, our safety, and our country's heritage. We offer our respect and thanks. We pray that you will watch over these special peoples, bless them with safety, and bring them home to a peaceful land and to joyous families. All this in Christ's name we pray. Amen. We're going to play the service song, the service medley. So when you hear your service song, please stand up and be recognized. United States Army.
United States Air Force. Tire the colors. Now we're going to have a little special music, uh, musical memories of um, WW2, uh, Pastor Steve, uh, Joel Stevenor. Uh, Pastor of Mount Zion Presbyterian Church, accompanied by his dear wife Jane on the piano. The first number I'd like to do for you tonight was made famous by actually two different artists, one Artie Shaw, the other Nat King Cole, its stardust. <laughs> Dusk of twilight time steals across the meadows of my heart. High in the sky, the little stars shine, always reminding me that we're apart. You wander down the and far away, leaving me a song that would not die. Love is the stardust of yesterday, a melody of things gone by. Sometimes I because it was probably one that was sung the most by all of the folks that stayed at home. And um, it's actually from the movie uh, Sweater Girl um, that starred Eddie Bracken. 
and it's called I Don't Want to Walk Without You. Keep knocking at my door. They've asked me out a hundred times or more. But all I say is leave me in the gloom. And here I sit within my lonely room. Cause I don't want to walk without. Walk without my arms around you, baby. I thought the day you left me behind. I'd take a stroll and get you right off my mind, but now I find that I It happens to be one of my very favorite pieces from this particular era, and it's There'll Be Bluebirds Over the White Cliffs of Dover. <laughs> Radio programs with it. 
And I thought tonight a tribute to all of our service people who have given so much for us that we needed to give thanks and to sing this beautiful song that actually Kate Smith went to uh, Irving Berlin and asked for. He had written it during World War I and it had sat in a desk unused, and she went to him and asked him if she could have a song that she could close her show with. And he gave her this song, and she signed over the rights to this song for every one of her recordings that was sold. All of the money that went from that particular recording went to the Boy Scouts of America. So, and now it's my great privilege to sing God Bless America. <laughs> As the storm clouds gather far across the sea, let us pledge allegiance to a land that's free. Let us all be grateful for a land so fair as we raise our Voices in a solemn prayer. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and God. To the oceans, why we roam? God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet. I was wondering what he's going to come up with on the WW2 songs. I had a few of my own I thought he could do with, but he didn't want to do poop poop, did him down and want him chew. <laughs> he, I, he said something about the three fish, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I just, just thought that was a good one. Uh, a few honored guests we have in the, uh, with our presence tonight, I'd like to introduce a few of them. Uh, we have Pat McDaniels, uh, the Decatur City Council. And we have uh, Graceland Memorial Cemetery, uh, Bruce Logan, Dave Goble, and Bill Pettit. And we have the Honorable uh, McElroy, our mayor, Mom and Pop Hensley, sitting right back there. Good to see you again. Uh, Mary Eaton, Macon County Recorder. Linda Little, Macon County uh, Court, uh, I'm sorry, Macon County Board. And uh, Jay Scott, Macon County State's Attorney. Did I miss anybody? If I did, it was not purpose, believe me. I just didn't sign in, so we're all set. Moving right along, I'd like to introduce, you know, we have van drivers who drive the vans to Danville, uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, uh, all the time. And we pick them up at 7 o'clock over at, uh, I can't remember where we're going now, I can't remember. Thank you, Kmart. Been a long day. Kmart, we take them up to uh, Danville. We get there about uh, 8.15, 8.30. Uh, as of late, we've been stopping by Champagne. We have some people to pick up there also. And we get there, your appointments are all done, and they come back. We usually leave there by 11.30, and back here by 1, 1.30, something like that, depending on the traffic. But I'd like to introduce the drivers. If they're here, would they please stand up when I call their name? Floyd Jones has driven for 16 years, 226 trips, 40,680 miles. Up there, the far side of here. 
Uh, day filing, 11 years, 263 trips, 47,340 miles. <laughs> Charles Front Seat Lowry, nine years, 199 trips, 35,820 miles. James Collier, six years, 138 trips, 24,840 miles. <laughs> Bill Peebler, four years, 83 trips, 14,904 miles. <laughs> Jerry Lutz, three years, 42 trips, 7,560 miles. And last but not least, Rusty Odom, one year, 22 trips, 3,960 miles. I know last year I made a joke about Rusty not getting his tires wet, but I think he has this year. He's got a couple signs back and forth. Uh, thank you all van drivers. We appreciate what you do, and I'm sure the veterans do also, because a lot of them would never, ever be able to get over for their appointments if it were not for... Bacon County Veterans Assistance Commission and these wonderful drivers. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Our guest speaker this evening is going to be Captain Steve Holden. Now, Steve is the director of the U.S. Emergency Chaplain Corps, which was formed, formed in the wake of the events of September 11, 2001. The Chaplain Corps serves first responders, police, fire, and EMS, the military in times of disaster and crisis. Chaplain Steve has responded to World Trade Center, both San Diego wildfires, hurricanes, Hurricane Katrina, Rita, Gustav, Ike, and I can't remember that one, <laughs> and, and numerous tornadoes, floods, and incidentals throughout the country and the Midwest. He has been in the chaplain since 18, 1982, with 17 years in healthcare, and the first, uh, was first responder since 1992. He's also a chaplain for the Illinois State Police beginning in 2002. He's married his wife, Cher, uh, since 1979, and he's a father of five children and one grandchild. I'd like to bring him up here. Steve Holden, chaplain. Good evening to everyone. As I was putting things together and getting ready to come in, uh, I noticed everyone filing in and finding their seats. It reminded me somewhat of church on Sundays where you have to get here early to get a seat in the back. <laughs> but one thing I can assure you tonight that won't be like church is you can keep your money in your pocket. I think we've had enough of an introduction for this evening on what I've done, but uh, some of the things that we have. The only things I would like to add to that is some of the things that we do actually for uh, the veterans and first responders in the area. Um, we work with the Macon County Veterans Coalition, uh, the Vest Veterans Assistance uh, Group here in town. Uh, we have a working relationship with the Illinois National Guard and their Partners in Care program. Also, we responded with the Illinois National Guard two years ago to uh, NATO. It was the first time that chaplains have been assigned to an area like that of natural, uh, national interest. And of course, many of you know that we've had an event follow the flag in the last six years uh, and sponsor that in the community. And if I could, just a couple of housekeeping announcements. Some coming events that are coming up after tonight, uh, Friday, any vets that are here or uh, families with assistance will be having a veteran stand down this Friday, 10 to three at Salvation Army. It's put on by the Macon County uh, Veterans Coalition. Also, Tuesday, December 2, we will be presenting the Veterans Memorial Wreath at the US, or, uh, State Capitol over in Springfield at the dedication ceremony that we have over there with the wreath lane and the uh, nativity scene. For those of you that may not be aware, Illinois, believe it or not, is only one of four states in the entire nation that has a nativity scene uh, that's passed the legal jurisdiction and everything else uh, in the entire country. Uh, that's open to the public, it's at noon. It's a great event. There's been a lot of people show up over the years, and it would be a great time to bring any kids that you have. Saturday, December 13th, Wreaths Across America is at Camp Butler. 
That is where we place wreaths there for all the service people uh, and, and do a terrific ceremony. If you come to Reeds Across America, uh, remember it is December. I think in the last seven years we've only had one Saturday where the snow has not been flying sideways. So dress appropriately, but it's a small sacrifice to make for the service and everything that the guys have done for us and the ladies as well. With this evening's address, if you will, it, it's very humbling for me to stand here before you, very humbling to be in the midst of so much talent, there's so much accomplishment, and so many things that are going well right here in this city and this community of Decatur. But with the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War this year, that was a trying time for a lot of people. It didn't make any difference what side the, the issue that you were on, it was tough. And there's been a lot said, a lot written, and a lot that's gone on since then. But one thing I would like for you right now to put in your thinking, if you would please, let this night begin to be your time of healing. <clears throat> let this night begin to be your time of consolation. Let this night be your time to give it over to God and receive his peace. There's many young people that are in the audience today, which is terrific. And with that in mind, I'd like to give a little bit of history that some of us know and that some of the rest of us would be great to be refreshed on. In 1971, while the Vietnam War was still being fought, Mary Hoff was the wife of a service member who was missing in action and a member of the National League of Families of American Prisoners and Missing in Action in Southeast Asia. She recognized the need for a symbol of the U.S. POW and Missing in Action, some of whom had been held in captivity already for as many as seven years. The flag is black. It bears in the center a black and white, the emblem of the League. The emblem was designed by Newt Hensley, excuse me, Heisley, and features a white disc bearing the black silhouette of a man who was his son, himself missing, Jeffrey Heisley. The watchtower with the guard on patrol, a strand of barbed wire, and above the disc, the letters in white, POW and MIA, framed in a white five-point star, below the disc in a black and white wreath over the white motto, you are not forgotten. The POW MIA was flown over the White House for the first time in September of 1982. On March 9th of 1989, the League flag that had flown over the White House and on the 1988 National POW Recognition Day was installed in the U.S. Capitol. And it was installed in the rotunda as a result of legislation passed by the 100th Congress. The League's flag is the only flag that has ever been displayed in the rotunda and the only flag that has ever been flown over the White House with the exception of our own Stars and Stripes of the U.S. flag. The leadership of both houses of the Congress hosted an inst the installation ceremony and demonstration of bipartisan Congress in its action. Beyond Southeast Asia, it has today become a symbol for POWs and MIAs from all U.S. wars. With the passage of Section 1082 of the 1998 Defense Authorization Act, during the first term of the 105th Congress, the POW flag was specified to fly each year on the following dates. Armed Forces Day, the third Saturday in May, Memorial Day, the last Monday in May, Flag Day of June 14th, Independence Day, July 4th, National POW MIA Recognition Day, which we seldom hear of, the third Friday in September, and of course today is Veterans Day. In the U.S. Armed Forces, in the dining halls, the mess halls, and the chow halls, and wherever it's displayed, it is displayed in a single table and a chair in the corner draped with the POW MIA flag as a symbol of the missing, and thus reserving a spot at the table in hopes of their return. The flag that you see behind me this evening is the flag from the Vietnam War Memorial in Washington, D.C. At the conclusion of the ceremony, 
we will not have a formal retirement ceremony. Instead, we would ask and give you the privilege to come forward, we'll move the podium. You can be photographed with the flag because it's a part of history. We've got a limited number, but I think we may have enough of a photograph taken from the wall with Marines that I knew that were out there. It will also have in it a certificate of authenticity sent to me by the U.S. Park Service in recognition and authenticity of the flag that it was, that it was there. So please take advantage of that. A brief history of Vietnam, if you would. The Japanese had taken so much of Southeast Asia from the French, but surrendered Vietnam to Ho Chi Minh, which declared their Independence Day, very recognizable, September 2nd of 1945. Many of you will recognize that date. It is the day the Japanese surrendered to the U.S. on the battleship Missouri, and the surrender was signed. Tensions escalated over the years, and the U.S. was sending, as we all know, advisors to South Vietnam. On August 2nd of 1964, the SS Maddox offshore and support craft were attacked in the Gulf of Tonkin by the Viet Cong, and on August 7th, the U.S. Congress passed the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, as many of you remember, which officially began the war, and the escalation of troops was shipped over. An official declaration of war, however, was never made. In 1961, there were 2,000 U.S. troops in Vietnam compared to 850,000 Viet Cong, the enemy. By 1964, there were 16,500 troops stationed and well over 1 million Viet Cong. Many battles and hardships took place, including the PR propaganda campaigns that we heard here in the States, the protests, the riots, and of course the peace talks in Paris. Though a most unfortunate set of circumstances and political maneuvering, the U.S. involvement in Vietnam ended August 15th of 1973, and Saigon itself fell to the Viet Cong in April of 1975. By most accounts, the casualties were astounding. One to three million Vietnamese were killed, including civilians. 300,000 Cambodians, 200,000 Laotians, and as we know, over 58,000 U.S. troops. Figures of 2,646 POW, MIA, U.S. soldiers were reported. Since then, 1,003 have been accounted for, but there is still another 1,643 as of December 25th, 2013, last year's records, that are still considered missing in action. We serve God and we serve man. We've all asked many questions during that time, and probably since then. They were difficult years. Where was God during all this? I don't know if I can really fairly answer that question, and I can't do it tonight. It's far too complex. I can't do it in two minutes. I don't want to insult your intelligence by even trying. But please, let me allow you to have some information on his representatives and where they were. From the beginning of the Revolutionary War, chaplains have served in the U.S. military, and Vietnam was no exception. The Army had over 300 field chaplains by 1967, and at that early date, 13 were already killed in action. The Marine Corps listed 700 chaplains serving 80,000 Marines and sailors. Chaplains received 26 silver stars, 66 legions of merit medals, 78 bronze stars, 28 Purple Hearts, 318 Air Medals, and 586 Army Commendations. You see, God's people are everywhere. God's people are here tonight. God's people are overseas. Many local congregations were actually started in Southeast Asia due to our own forces and our own chaplains. On Easter Sunday, 1971, while the chaplains were conducting field services, there was a vicious army battle that was attacked in uh, three days. It killed 11, including Chaplain Merle Brown. In World War II, 100 chaplains were killed in action. 
the third highest grouping behind the infantry and the Air Force. Many of you know it, and it's certainly been said, there's no atheist in a foxhole. The circle of life continues to go. Personally, I never served. I missed Vietnam by a year. We had our birthdays called in high school. It was a lottery. We listened, we got our notifications. We went down, we signed up, we registered, we got our cards. I came back classified 1H, first out. And then of course, 1973, it was over. I had a lot of friends that went up. Had a lot of guys with big brothers. Had an uncle that was only five years older than me. So much of a brother himself. And he went. There were two that went from our same Boy Scout troop. My scout master was a Marine. My dad was in the Navy. We had nine assistant scout masters and I don't think that there was but one of them that was not a vet. The Marine, he did search and destroy missions. Tension every day, every night. The other in the Army, he didn't make it. It was a sad day. But I hold here. The impression of Tom Fletcher, because like so many of you know who have lost those as well, it's not just another name on the wall. In that same circle of life, I lost my dad this year. He and my scoutmaster were in the same nursing home for five years. Tom Fletcher's dad was in that nursing home as well. Along with that, five of the other scoutmasters we buried this year. It's been said that those coming home after Vietnam were basically the unwilling, led by the unknowing, doing the impossible, and coming home to the ungrateful. There's no better thing to say to a vet except this, welcome home, job well done. As a chaplain, I've spoken with many vets over the years and first responders. I've listened to their stories, some of them mundane everyday service, others in terrible situations. Those conversations won't be shared here tonight or any other time. That's theirs. It's their private time. It's their soul. And I wouldn't violate that confidentiality for anything. But I will tell you the one common thing that runs through all of the conversations I've had. You see, it's not the violence. It's not the gruesome details. It's not the awful suffering. It's not how tough their sergeant was on them. It's love. In tough times, you bond with those that you're sharing difficulties with and adversity. And it doesn't matter if it's war, it happens in everyday life. Each of us have experienced that, no matter what it was. But these soldiers, they fought for each other. They fought for the love and the honor of each other. They fought for the love of liberty and they fought for the love of this country. And most importantly, this is all said, they fought for you. They fought for their family. They fought for their loved ones. And they fought for those who they don't even know. It was that love that kept them going. It was that love that brought hope. And it was that love that brought them back to us. There's a couple other things I'd like you to know about soldiers and vets first responders that I've dealt with. They're not all crazy. They don't all have PTSD. They're not all alcoholics. And they're not all a ticking time bomb. Actually, they can be a lot of fun. They're like any of us who have good days and bad days. They're smart. They're intelligent. They're intuitive. And I'm honored to be a part of, of what they have. In closing, let it never be said that this generation, that it would fall upon us, that has lost the God-given freedom and liberty 
that God Almighty Himself has given in this land. Now, I speak in many churches, and I want to ask you to do me a favor. Ten years ago, there was not one church that I could go into that did not have the U.S. flag and the Christian flag on each side of me. And today, I can't say that. But God help us all the day that those two symbols are ever discontinued from each other. Let me read a scripture that I feel is closing and fitting in this time. From Ecclesiastes. To everything, there is a season. And for every purpose under heaven. There's a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up and harvest what was planted. There's a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. There's a time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. There's a time to cast stones and a time to gather stones. There's a time to embrace and there's a time to step back and not embrace. There's a time to gain and a time to lose. There's a time to keep and a time to throw away. There's a time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. There's a time to love and a time to hate. There's a time of war and there's a time of peace. God has made everything beautiful in its time. And also he has put eternity into our hearts. No one can find out the work that God does because he does it from the beginning to the end, and he does it well. I know there is nothing better for man than to rejoice and do good in all their lives. For those who went through the time in history of Vietnam, either in the service or as families here in the States, let this be our time to heal, our time to gather. Let this be our time to gain and our time to build up let it be our time to laugh and our time to embrace and our time to love and our time to be loved. Nothing is dearer in life and nothing more precious than to live it in freedom. And that way, may we bless our God for our nation and for our freedom and may we never give up the right to practice and openly express it. Our faith, our liberty, and our witness for God and Christ in this nation. Now may God bless our military, our veterans, our families, and may we accept the responsibility for the godly heritage that we have in this country. And may God bless all of you. Thank you. A lot of numbers there, all the, the people that are dead, dying, Vietnam vets. It's just a Amazing thing to do. Mason Eaton, you've heard him sing this to us before with our Memorial Day ceremonies. Now he's going to sing God Bless the USA. If tomorrow all the things were gone, work for all my life. And I had to start again Just my children and my wife I thank my lucky star To be living here today Because that flag still stands for freedom And it can take that way Tennessee.
see across the plains of Texas from sea to shining sea from Detroit down to Houston in New York to LA where there's pride in every American heart and it's time we stand and say well I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free and I won't forget the men who died who gave that right to me and I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today because there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA Thank you Let us again be in the spirit of prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, author and giver of peace, again we lift our praise for those who serve our nation. We ask your blessing, your mercy, upon our soldiers, our veterans, our men and women who protect home and country, who answer the call to action, who are willing to endure bitter conflict, who fight for our lives and our freedoms, who are prepared to give their lives. They serve a noble cause. In serving us in these ways, they serve you well. So send us forth tonight grateful and with renewed dedication to you and to our nation. We pray now and evermore. <coughs> Amen. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out this evening. It's been a good, cold evening. I'd like to thank the Megan County Autogard. You're fantastic as usual. I'd just like to do one thing in closing. My wife and I were talking here a couple of weeks ago about the Pledge of Allegiance. I think you remember years ago, Red Skelton did one. And with your indulgence tonight, I'd like to, I'd like to read that. <clears throat> he said, I've been listening to you boys and girls recite the Pledge of Allegiance all semester, and it seems as though it's becoming monotonous to you. If I may, may I recite it and try to explain to you the meaning of each word. I, me, an individual, a committee of one, pledge, dedicate all my worldly goods to give without self-pity, allegiance, my love and my devotion to the flag, our standard, old glory, a symbol of freedom wherever she waves, there's respect because your loyalty has given her a dignity that shouts freedom is everybody's job. United, that means we all have come together, states, individual communities that have united into 48 great states, 48 individual communities with pride and dignity and purpose, all divided with imaginary boundaries, yet united in a common purpose, and that's love for country. And to the Republic, a Republic, a state in which the sovereign power is invested in representatives chosen by the people to govern and the government of the people, it is from the people to the leaders and not from the leaders to the people. For which it stands, one nation, one nation, meaning so blessed by God. Indivisible, incapable of being divided, with liberty, which is freedom, the right of power to live one's own life with, without threats, fear, or some sort of retaliation, and justice, the principle or qualities of dealing fairly with others, for all, for all, which means boys and girls, as much as it is your country, it is also mine. He said, now boys and girls, let us hear you recite the Pledge of Allegiance. So I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, 
one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And then Mr. Red Skelton went on to say this. He said, since I was a small boy, two states have been added to our country, and two words have been added to the Pledge of Allegiance, under God. Now, wouldn't it be a pity if someone said that was a prayer, and it would be eliminated from schools also? Thank you. Bacon County Honor Guard, I'd like to hear, to hear, please stand for the playing of taps. Thank you for coming, and as Red Skelton would say, 